How do you get started in an RV, whether it's living full time or maybe just camping on the weekends? We're Jared and Kayla, and we're here to show you how. Tip number one is to just plan where you're gonna go. And this is fun because even if you don't have an RV yet, you can kind of live vicariously and you can do research and you can just look around at what's out there. So the number one app that we use all the time to find places to camp, to find places to dump, is called Campendium. It's a game changer. When we first were planning on doing RV life, we were looking for a resource that we could find boondocking spots, which is just staying out in nature without having to hook up to campgrounds, or even finding campgrounds. We're like, how the heck do you find those things? Campendium, that's how you find those things. We're gonna put a link to Campendium as well as every other resource that we talk about in the description below. So you can start booking things because even if you're not ready to hit the road today, you may need to book a national park campground months in advance. Tip number two, it can be pretty tricky to know what to even bring in an RV. So the first thing you can do is think, what do you have in your house? You're gonna need to bring plates. You're gonna need to bring water. You're gonna need to plan all of your meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner. You need to know, does your fridge work? If it doesn't, then you need to bring a cooler. Before we even hit the road, I got the Acuva water filter. This thing is amazing. It filters all the water from your fresh water tank so that you can drink it. Some people drink it anyway, but I've also heard of stories where people got really sick. Being on the road full time, we get water from a variety of sources. And so we wanted to make sure that we were never getting sick and it was always safe to drink. So we can have 90 gallons in our fresh water tank and we can drink all 90 of them through our UV water filter. And imagine having 90 gallons of water with water bottles. Like what would, that, what would that even look like? We've got enough water. Yeah. Number three. Okay, now this one is literally huge. Okay, you need to make a departure checklist. That is all the things that you need to check before you roll down the road in a huge vehicle. And that's mostly, are your brake lights working? Are the tires all pumped up to where they need to be? What else? Does your fridge work? Does your like, fridge work? Is it on? Don't check that the day of. Cause then your whole, if you're only going out for a weekend, especially your whole trip is just canceled because your fridge doesn't work or you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And things, they break. If you don't check your RV, you are going to miss things. So there are lots and lots of good checklists online that you can download and it will walk you through everything that other super experienced RVers have already found and put in their checklist. Another thing that we got right away before we hit the road was a tire pressure monitor. Mm. And again, we're gonna link that below. They're not that expensive. Yeah. It has saved us. It really has. Like so many times. That way you just have it on your dash and you can see your trailer tire pressure all the time. We hit a nail and right away it started beeping and we were able to get off the road and get it patched up and get it taken somewhere. Yeah. We, we didn't even have a blowout. Like yeah. we caught it in time. We were able to drive like two hours on it being not flat, but like with the nail. in not great condition with a nail in it. And it was totally fine. And we saved ourselves for sure on that. Yeah, so that definitely worth it. Everybody should have one of those. Number four, before we started RV life, I had never towed a trailer before. It's important to take time to practice getting familiar with your vehicle. So one of the very first things we did was we went to a massive empty parking lot and we put some cones up and I practiced backing in and doing this and doing that because it is complicated. I mean, we probably did it for like three hours. Okay? Yeah. So don't expect to walk into it and just be like a master. The most successful backing is just that you don't hit anything. Because you always see that one camper who's just like, he is a towing master and he just tears up when he yeah. backs up. They're backing up at 30 miles an hour. Yeah, you're like, whoa. And you're like, that's fast. Let's take your time. All right, now tip number five, you're gonna wanna invest in one of these puppies, okay? You might be asking, what the heck is that? This is a surge protector. Now, if you're gonna just be doing a bunch of boondocking, just being out in the wilderness, you probably don't necessarily need one of these. But if you ever plan on staying in a campground or a friend's house, you need one of these. Basically, every time you plug your house into somebody else's power, you wanna make sure that they have good power. If there's a surge or if there's low voltage or high voltage or anything, it could fry your entire electrical system, which is gonna cost thousands of dollars to replace. Don't just get a surge protector, get an EMS, electrical monitoring system. They're a little more expensive, but they will cover you for more things than just a surge. Lightning? 
lightning is a surge. Before we get to number six, if you are an RVer or you want to become an RVer because it's the best and we love it, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos and any of our tips and you'll just have a good time with us on the road. Number six. Six. Make sure you know how to properly level your rig. With the travel trailer, we have leveling blocks. And so you want to make sure you're level left to right or else somebody's going to be falling on you all night long because your bed is not level. Yeah. Or... Well, that and the fridge, they do say if you have a fridge that runs off of propane, that it might not work as efficiently hmm. if you're not level. Do you know why that is? I don't know. I just it has to do that. with like how the fridge works. <laughs> it has to do with how it works. Yeah, we've never had any issues. We've been kind of unlevel and the fridge was still doing good, but it but that's is just definitely, what we've heard. Get the proper leveling blocks. We use the uh, orange just Carm Tech levelers that you go that you put underneath the wheels, and then also you can use stabilizer jacks. Um, we have a bucket for our tongue jack, so we can lift that higher. Lots of different tools that we're going to link below on how to get level. Number seven, if you want to find a way to really elevate your RV life, this is the way to do it. Okay, and that is using apps. Yes, there are so many RV so apps many. out there, and it actually can be kind of hard to weed through which ones are actually the good ones. These are the good ones, okay? We already mentioned Campendium. If you want to find a campsite, use Campendium. If you want to find boondocking, also Campendium. And it's free. It's free. If you're looking for something to do, we love to hike, so all trails, all the way. You've probably already heard of that one, but if you haven't, look it up. You're gonna find so many trails just even around you in your neighborhood. iOverlander is a really cool app because it will show you everything. That's how we find water, propane, laundromats, showers. Yeah dump stations, anything. There's also a lot of subscription apps that you kind of have to pay for that give you opportunities to stay at campgrounds. So like Harvest Host, what's a thousand, thousand trails. trails. Um, we don't have any of these because we aren't a fan of paying for monthly subscriptions. Those are definitely options for you. And some people really love those. I would say get started RVing before you commit to any kind of membership. Absolutely. Because then you'll kind of feel like what you like as far as your camping style like we like to boondock and so i don't want to spend thousands of dollars on thousand trails and then not use it number eight always have a first aid kit a pain monitor mm. yeah uh co2 monitor fire, a alarm. fire alarm uh know where the nearest hospital is that's another one that we kind of forget to do sometimes yeah. but like if you're in an emergency you want to know where to go and yeah. not rely on your phone, especially if you don't have signal. Number nine. Now this one is just making sure you know what the rules are with where you're staying, okay? Even staying out in boondocking spots, you might have to buy permits to be there, or you might have to at least print a permit out just to say you are authorized to be on the land so they know that you're there. Also, campgrounds, they have nighttime rules, so maybe lights need to be out by 11. Yeah, they'll have, you know, no generators after a certain time mm -hmm. or no generators at all are allowed or the gates might lock okay look into that because some campgrounds lock the gates at a certain time and you do not want to be locked out of your own campground and then there's universal rules of like don't leave trash seriously there's so much trash everywhere that we've been i mean it's not been awful but we do see trash all the time and so these places are going to get shut down if we all just keep trashing them. So we try to pick up trash where we can. So that's another rule you could kind of, you know, take on yourself is just to pick up trash, even though you're not the one that left it there. Yeah. The biggest tip, number 10, just go. Just start. Get out there, go yeah. do it. It's so easy to like, feel like you're not ready or you need this or you need that or you need the other, but just get out there. The best piece of advice we got when we were starting on the road was you never know what you need until you just start, okay? And then you'll start and you'll say, oh man, we need an AC or we need this and that. You'll know what you need when you don't have it. You do not need a, you know, 5,000 watts of solar. You do not need some crazy new suspension. And if you do not have a rig, 
go rent one. We did that before mm. we started, just to see what it would be like. Could we even get cell signal out there? So yeah. just do your due, diligence, your due diligence. We hope that you've enjoyed these travel tips with RVing and hope that you are able to get out on the road. Now, if you have any questions, remember we have all of our links in the descriptions and we're happy to hear you in the comments with any questions you might have. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna have more information on RVing and we will see you next time.